Hi everyone, my name is Victor and I'm one of the authors of technique.com. Today we're going to look at um, how to configure other services um, on Linux Red Hat 7. Alright, so we're going to start with how to configure the LDAP server first and after that we're going to look at how to configure the LDAP client. Alright, if you want to learn um, more about LDAP, you can come to this website to do that. I'm going to be dropping the link to this website in the description section below all right so i'm not going to just i'm not going to talk about uh, what ldap is or the structure of ldap um what i'm concerned about in this video is to just show you the step-by-step -step process of how to install and configure the ldap server on red hat 8 system all right and quick one if you're also going to be writing the rhc 8 exam or the SUSE linux exam or the lfcs exam you can come to this website as well you can see my cursor Alright, you can click on this link and it will take you to the practice questions so that you can always practice before you write the exam. It is important. Alright, so I'm just going to be dropping the link to this website in the description section below. The first thing you need to do is to install the LDAP server. And the LDAP server that we want to install here is Open LDAP. Alright, so we'll just do that. So I'll just install the open LDAP client too. Alright, so if I need, in case I need um, any utility I might need to use to configure. So I'm just going to do this, alright. Now that the installation is complete, the LDAP user would automatically be created, alright? So let's just um, confirm that. So you can see the LDAP user created. So the next step to take is to um, set up LDAP administration password, alright? And we can do that by using the command slap password, alright? So we can give it any password. Oops, my password did not match. So let me do that again. All right, so I have the password now. So what I'm going to do is to um, copy this. I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to save it somewhere, right? Um, the key is important because you're going to be using it um, in the long run. So let's start the LDAP service, all right? Oops, um, the LDAP service is slap D. Right, slap D. So we can verify if this is started. All right, so um, let's just scroll up and see. You can see that the service is active and it is running. All right, so if you wish, you can enable the service. And if you don't wish, you can just leave it. All right, so the service is enabled. The next step is to create a self-signed certificate for LDAP, all right? So I'm just going to copy the command from the website and I'm going to paste it here. So like I said, I'm going to be dropping the link to the website in the description section below, all right? So you can always copy that too, okay? So I'm going to enter the details to generate the certificate. So this is the country name, all right? So presently I am in Nigeria, so I'm going to put Nigeria. The state or province, so Lagos, all right, and um, the locality, I'm just going to put Lagos as well. Whoops, all right. So the organization name, um, for example, let me just put Technit. This is Technit's website, and Technit um tutorial, all right. So organization unit name, I'm going to put IT. That's the OU, for example, and the common name, all right. I can put the host name. So, for example, I can put hqprd1, all right? And the email address, I can just put info at technit.com, 
okay so we have the certificate generated so you can verify that the certificate has been created all right from the path we have here okay so you can see that the certificate has been created the next step to take is to edit the open LDAP, LDAP database configuration file all right the database configuration file is usually in this location all right so what we're going to edit here is the ocl database okay this one htb.ldif okay so um you should always back up the configuration files before editing so it's uh, always advisable you do that which is what we're going to do right now so i'm just going to back this up in the tmp directory all right now we can edit the configuration file all right so the parameters we're going to edit here um we're going to edit the we're going to look for the ocl suffix which is this and we're going to edit it to you the domain all right whichever domain you've chosen to use so i have chosen to use the technit.com so this is going to be technit and dc is going to be dot com i'm also going to edit the ocl root um side all right which is here i'm going to just add technique and this is going to be dot com as well i'm also going to include the held up admin password all right so i'm going to say olc root password so I'm just going to um, copy in here the key, the key I told you to copy and paste somewhere. So here is the key. I'm also going to include the um, OCTL certificate file here. So at the end of this file, I'm just going to include the TLS certificate file. I'm also going to include the certificate key file for the domain. All right. So let's uh, save the file and now I can restart the slab D service. All right, our service is restarted and the next step is to edit the open LDAP monitor configuration file to allow access for monitoring. All right, so um, that's going to be in the that should be in the OCL database monitor configuration file. All right. I sh once showed you the configuration files here. Um, let's see if I can look for that here. All right. So let's just navigate so we can I can show it to you again. Oh, I guess we're in that path. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So we're just going to edit this monitor.ldd file all right um so we do vi we can just copy it from here or we just use the old path all right so for those that uh, are new to LDAP I'm just going to copy the old path okay um this is the old path I'm just going to edit here so what we're going to uh, edit is the OSC access line and we change it to our domain name all right so which is this this is going to be technique all right and then this is going to be dot com so we can just save this file and we can test the configuration or changes that have been made so far in the configuration file to do to do that we can use the command slap test i think you all right so just forget about this error what we're concerned about here is the config file testing succeeded all right so the next step is to configure the database for ldap usually um open ldap as a sample database in the location usr share open ldap server db config file dot example 
So we can use that um, database, the database configuration, all right, in that location. So, but to do that, so we're just going to copy the the DB config example file into the valib LDAP location as the DB config file, all right. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to copy here this to this location, all right. So let's add some few LDAP schemas, which which is um, the LDAP database structure to the LDAP database. All right, so we can do this. We're going to add the cosine schema first. All right. So this is added. We're go also going to add the miss schema as well. And we're also going to add this schema as well. All right, so um, like I said, you can always copy these commands from the website, all right, and you can use them. The next step to do is to create the base.div file for our domain, all right, which is the format of how we want the database to be, all right. So we can do that. We can create it anywhere we want it. But I'm just going to create it in the um, root directory, okay? So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to call this base dot div, okay? So I'm just going to use this structure. I've also copied this from the website and pasted it here. This file is very sensitive, so you need to edit it with caution. All right? Okay. So I'm going to create the base object for LDAP. So the base object is the standard format in Open LDAP, and objects can be can be the first name, the last name, the phone numbers, email ID, you know, etc. And the migration tool that is needed to create the base object, uh, we need to we need to do that. We need to install that migration tool. Okay. So that is going to convert or migrate the local users to the open LDAP database or format okay so i'm just going to install the migration tool okay so the installed migration tools can be found in user share migration tools all right so let's just look at that all right so we're going to edit the migration underscore command.ph file all right so i'm just going to do this okay well, let me just because of um, some new users because of the people that are new to Linux, I'm just going to do this. I don't want too much of um, questions on this topic. All right, so um, I'm going to look for the line default mail domain, and I'm going to and default base. I'm going to edit the parameter to the domain. All right, to our domain. So I can just do this. I can just look for the line default mail domain all right so i'm going to edit this to technit.com which is our domain all right so i'm also going to edit this to technit Okay, so I'm also going to look for the line extended schema. I want to make that one. Okay, let me just let me just look for the line extended schema. So I'm just going to make this line one. All right, so I'm just going to save this file. Now that our migration tool is ready, so we're going to create some users for this purpose. 
for the purpose of this study and we're going to convert them to the open order format which is the dot ldif all right ldif means other data interchange format all right so let's um create two users so i'm just going to create the user jacob all right let me just password jacob All right, so um, I can also create another user. Let me create the user uh, Dorcas, for example. And let me create um, the user Uluwa to missing. All right, so that's my second name. Let me password Dorcas. And let me see uh, the password. All right, so now that we've created this users, we're going to copy the user's information to the slash root password and also the slash root group so we can migrate and convert these users from the location to the open LDAP format, all right? And since we do not need all the users in the etc password file, so what we can just do is to, um, we can filter out the necessary users and not the services users so let's just filter them out all right so for the um, group we can also use this command so i'm just going to copy and paste it from the website all right so we can verify that the users have been copied to the root password we can just do this all right so you can see that Oh, we even have about four users copied all right so now we can convert the um oh let's verify for the groups before we convert let's see this all right so we have them here so we can now convert the users file to the ldif which is the LDAP data interchange format using the migration tool all right so we can just do this user come here so user share migration tools I'm just going to use the command this to migrate and this other command for the group all right so we can verify the conversion right now so we can just do cut root users dot rdif wow so we have the user Oluwa Tome scene being converted to the other user. We have the user Dokas, all right, being converted. We have the user um, Jacob be converted. So the users are converted to the other users, all right. And for the group as well, you can verify. So this is going to be groups or group dot ldif all right so we have them be converted so the next step is to export users converted to the dot ld format to the other database all right so you need to export the three dot ldif format all right which are the base users and the group to the other database and to do that we we'll use this command all right So I'm going to enter the LDAP admin password um, I created. Okay. So I just do for the second one. And for the third one. Oops, I must have entered the wrong, the wrong password. So let's do this again. All right, so we have the three of them added. All right, so we can just test our configuration by fetching one of the user's information. So I can do LDAP search. 
um, let me look for the CN which is Jacob right then I'm going to look for DC which is Tethanid and um, DC which is COM All right, so you see that we um, we already have this user created, which is the Jacob. We can search for this user, and um, the LDAP configuration is fine. All right, so we're done with the LDAP server setup, but we need to also uh, connect, of course, connect the server via the connect to the server via the client. That is the LDAP client. So we need to prepare the server for the client. All right, so. What we can do is to allow the LDAP service in the firewall rule. So I'm just going to do that by using the command firewall cmd add service LDAP permanent. So I can just um, restart the firewall service. All right, so we have that um, already. So we can also, um, for the held up client, um, we, we we also need the NFS to be installed because of um, when you need the user's own directory, all right? So um, I'm just going to do that as well. What I'm doing is to prepare the server for the LDAP client, all right? So I'm just going to install the NFS utility. So I've talked about NFS in one of the um, my videos, so you can just well I'm going to um, put the link to the video in the description section below, so you can know much more about NFS. All right, if you don't know much about it, so we're just going to start the NFS server right now. I'm also going to start the RPC bind service. Alright. And I'm also going to allow the NFS service in the firewall rule. So you can just reload the firewall. Alright, so um this is the way we um set up NFS server on Red Hat 7 or Saint OS 7 system and this is also a way you can prepare the server for the client for the LDAP client all right so um, thank you for watching and please um, subscribe to this channel in the next video we're going to look at how to connect the LDAP client to the LDAP server how we can authenticate from the client all right to the server so thank you once again for watching Please subscribe to this channel and bye for now.